सो राजा जी थैंक यू फर्स्टली फॉर टेकिंग योर टाइम आउट फॉर दिस कॉन्वर्जेशन रियली अप्रिशिएटेड जय जगत आपको जय जगत जय जगत so uh, yeah this is so nice to have you in this conversation and uh, there is so much we could speak about mm-hmm. i think top of the mind uh, what i would like to get started with is uh, with the current situation right so uh, where we are right now aur abhi desh mein jo chal raha hai mm-hmm. how do we make sense of it kya ho raha hai kyu ho raha hai yahan tak hum kaise pahunche mm-hmm. how did we reach here what happened Where did we go uh, wrong? Do, yeah. do, do, do hai mere, mere mein. There are two, two issues that are the day. So when COVID arrived, I was in Armenia. Uh, we were we were walking from Delhi to Geneva and uh, we were halfway through. and uh, suddenly covid came and to be frank i was uh, initially shocked but then i i, I was happy uh, why i was happy i said look uh, covid has come to wake us up uh, covid has come to shake you up so this waking up shaking up this doesn't happen through a jay jagat yatra so jay jagat yatra is too small to wake up the world shake up the world so i said look something very serious need to happen if the world need to wake up and so in my heart i became suddenly happy started speaking to people telling that look uh, covid has come to tell us look the 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 development model the economic model that we are pursuing are not going to going to last long so this is a warning that we need to change our our way of thinking our way of doing etc etc and we started writing to people saying that look now we should speak about uh, cease fire all over the world because this is not the time to fight between people this is a time to see how the world can be reorganized we wrote to the united nations saying that please ask the rich countries to forgive the 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 debt of poor countries because this is not the time for them to repay the debt it is the time to fight covid then reorganize their economy etc so uh, i began with a kind of an upbeat you know in the sense come on now now this will not be taken uh, lightly by the leadership of the world they will understand that this is a message of course the world was already speaking about 10 years to go etc so people knew that if we continue the same path same model uh, within 10 years the world is going to to be in difficulty crisis so covid was um, a kind of a wake up call to my mind and then uh waited for some time started speaking to people creating enthusiasm in the mind of people etc but then soon i realized that people are not waking up uh, on the contrary they are trying to accelerate the the same model because now let us sell more coal and let us sell more iron ore and let us sell this and make more money because the economy is in crisis so rather than reorganizing the economy and reorganizing the development model people started pursuing the same model uh, uh, in a in a in a in a very very powerful way so then i thought okay this is this is not waking up people so that was one one uh, thing that Uh, i am i am still playing with you know why did that happen why even such a huge crisis couldn't wake up people in this in this world the second thing i am i am struggling with is uh, about the leadership model that is emerging one after the other you know we found uh, recently we we saw how trump behaved you know he in spite of getting defeated in an election he is refusing to go out of white house Uh, you saw putin wanting to be there till 2036 and he is doing everything to destroy his opposition to stay there you saw uh, in china the leader says i am a lifelong leader here now there is no no more election or change and erdogan in uh, in turkey is trying to do similar things so you see a a model of leadership emerging globally Uh, that is very disturbing people uh, i mean we we thought with 
with advancement of uh, uh, knowledge, advancement of scientific knowledge, people will be behave differently. People will become more enlightened. People will become more uh, more uh, uh, interested in introducing new values. But what is happening is one after the other, including India, this this model is emerging where uh, I know everything. I, I can fix everything and I don't have to talk to anybody. I will do what I feel like doing. This attitude is coming. And then you look at, um, uh, look at um, other kind of organizations and see whether are they giving answer to these problems, the voluntary organization, social movements, etc. Are we answering these questions by behaving differently? Not so much, you know, not so much. So uh, we, we only have a small kingdom, so we behave the same way in our kingdom. If we get an opportunity to control a larger kingdom, probably we'll behave the same way like these people are behaving. So on one side, lack of leadership, complete absence of leadership, a leadership with imagination, leadership with some kind of a forward-looking ideas. And on the other side, the absolute resistance to any change. You know, it's like this is a model that we have accepted and then this is how we are going to drive this world. Uh, the planet will remain or not remain is none of my concern. So these are two things that I am reflecting on. And why is it happening? Why, why human beings are uh, so, so, so adamant? Uh, why are we not willing to bring about change? Why can't we see through the problems that we are facing and say, look, these problems cannot be solved by driving the world the same way, but we need to change and really engage in a process of discussing what is that change that need to be brought about? What is that change that will give justice to millions of people? What is that change that will make governance a nonviolent process? What is that educational process that will create sensitivity in the minds of young people? So rather than rethinking about the entire agenda, we say that this is the right way and we will continue to do this. And that is worrying me a lot. You know, that means even, even the greatest challenges that we face, uh, humankind is not willing to change. And we are, we are completely solved of this idea of, uh, idea of uh, making money at, it, at any cost. Nationally, I was very concerned and I, I kept speaking about uh, the, the, the degradation that is coming into the political world, you know. Uh, of course, the politicians are trying to control the social work world by amending this act and that act. So probably they, they will control it the way they want to control. But the political world, I mean, buying and selling MLAs has become such a common thing now, you know. Uh, uh, after ruling the state for 15 years, uh, the power went to Congress from BJP in Madhya Pradesh. And in one and a half years time, they were able to buy 21 MLAs back into their fold and recreate their own government. I mean, it's not happening in one place. Same thing is happening in many states in Northeast India. This, this level of politics that uh, uh, I, I need to be in power at any cost and I will do everything. I will spend money. I will buy people. I will, I will corrupt people. I will do anything in order to, in order to remain in power. See, up to election, we faced it all these years. People were bribing, giving alcohol, giving sadi, giving money to people to get vote. And that we have seen happening. And we were all very concerned about it. But this level that even after getting elected, now you don't stay with your party. You will change over because that is where you get a power. And power will bring you money. And that money can be used again for fighting election. So this level of degradation in politics is worrying me a lot. And from that kind of a political system, what kind of change you can expect? So globally, nationally, this is a very, very, very difficult time. More than the COVID, I am concerned about mm -hmm. how people are behaving mm -hmm. uh, in front of this crisis, right? So I, I recently, I don't use such harsh words but then i told someone that shamelessness has come to uh, come to its peak you know and um, mm -hmm. uh, one used to be feel ashamed of doing bad things wrong things 
uh, selling and buying uh, elected representatives etc saying lies in public meeting or uh, or uh, so now you don't have to feel any shame you can say what you want to say you can do what you want to do and this is worrying me that this is a culture in which young people are getting drawn to you know all these political parties have their followers and these followers are admiring their leaders for doing what they are doing so if this is the kind of society uh, that is going to come uh, uh, because of the kind of leadership that we are providing uh, that is that is very sound to my mind mm-hmm. and that is one reason why i want at least the social movements and social organization to behave very differently and uh, in fact do introspection about how they are behaving how they are doing things how they can do things different etc etc mm-hmm. even at a at a micro level if they can get set examples probably that that will be a way forward so this is this is something i thought mm-hmm. i should begin with expressing yeah sure raja ji thank you for sharing that uh, i think that births that gives me two three questions and you can choose which of these you would like to respond to i think one is that a lot of these leaders were voted in power by us right like i can totally see how the middle class powered uh, in india the government like i could see my father being completely optimistic and Sorry. feeling that okay this is the moment golden moment for india uh you know when we vote the congress out we vote the bjp in and there is obviously something about people themselves either i don't know being greedy or getting swayed or maybe they're even wise i don't know how do you read that but <laughs> basically that people have also willed <laughs> have brought and willed such leaders into power mm. right uh, and so what is the people's role in what have we fallen for i think that is a question and particularly because i come from the middle class i would love your reflections on what the middle class has uh, kind of the privileged middle class which is the beneficiary in some places also of this and uh, you know what have they fallen for so one was about people that i wanted to ask um, the second was you said that now social organizations need to set an example and behave differently and i would kind of also request you to share a bit about how do you feel in a time when there is so much pressure from the government and from everywhere uh what should then movements and civil society really do uh that can set an example uh for them so i think these two questions for me and you could choose to answer any yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah. think both 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 the issues are Uh, very diff- very very important abhishek bhai because um, on one side um, see this uh, uh, degradation in political field is a concern because you know i i am in south india now you know it's like um, how how people uh, speak very harsh language against uh, brahmins for example you know this is this and the brahmin thing you know it's like really pointing to a caste and then attacking it and how others will speak about dalits you know uh, so and then how people speak about muslims in in one part of the country and how the muslims will speak about others you know it's like uh, see in a, in a in a situation where um, where people are not able to uh, grow into into national leadership you know it's like uh, a, because i don't have the capacity to uh, uh, to imagine a nation eh? or a or a world or a planet uh, what is important for me is to cut everything to the size uh, that i can handle right so uh, most of the leaders are now into not not to challenge themselves and become a national leader or a global leader mahatma gandhi became a global leader because he could really think of the planet and uh, survival of the planet and future of the planet etc etc and he could speak about sarvodaya well being of all uh, so that was one kind of leadership we had in this country but then now what you see is people wanting to cut it into pieces because that's all what i can i can grow i can only be leader of my caste uh and or my sub caste you know i can't even become leader of my caste so i, mm. I will divide that into sub caste and right. then suddenly become a leader of that sub caste 
and then see how do i use that subcast identity as a a bargaining point for getting a place in the politics mm. and if i can't do that then i will become uh, i will be a champion of my religion because then i can get all my religious people around me and then use that as a political a point for bargaining my my power so what is happening is in the absence of uh, people's capacity to grow to national level mm-hmm. international level we have come to this new politics called uh, regionalism and casteism and communalism etc you know even even around language you know somebody can fight hindi and you can win the win the election like like that what happens in south india now in some part of south india so so we are now trying to see where am i comfortable and how far i can go and how do i cut the society to the size of my imagination my capacity and this is a very very dangerous thing mm-hmm. because in a in this world where the planet is in crisis we are looking for people who can cross this borders you know the border of caste border of religion border of nation and think of a planet right like uh, like uh, armstrong and aldrin said when they were in they were la- they landed in moon they said look from looking from here we don't see any scratch on the face of mother earth it is just mm. one piece you no know, one piece in harmony but the politicians have come and uh, cut it into pieces like what they did in africa you have made straight lines and everything becomes country so we have messed up this world uh, to an extent that uh, the 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 planetary crisis cannot be addressed you know the planetary crisis is poverty planetary crisis is uh, climate change planetary crisis is inequality planetary crisis is war and violence so this planetary crisis can be handled only when you think uh from that that angle and we lose that uh, that is why initially i said even trump and putin and all of them put together they can only speak about their country and defeat defeat neighboring countries and uh, get more land into their country etc etc so mm-hmm. i think this is this is a big problem of uh, the 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 size of leadership you know uh, the 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 mahatma gandhi is and nelson mandela is are missing you know mm-hmm. i mean uh, it is a tragedy basically mm-hmm. that you know why people want to be so small mm-hmm. if at all you want to be something why don't you want to be big right mm-hmm. to to mm-hmm. imagine right. big do big you know grow big why mm-hmm. why is it so difficult i don't know so mm-hmm. that is one one thing that we need mm-hmm. to see can young people move beyond this this limitations of uh, wanting to be a leader at any cost mm. by 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 making hate speech you know if you can just make hate speech i see some of the videos whether the hate comes from left or the hate comes from right for me they're all hate just because the hate comes from left it doesn't become beautiful yeah. and the hate comes from right <laughs> becomes right. bad no i no, don't see that is hate. hate is hate and um, whether hate comes from the muslim community or hindu community or from the 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 the, the dalit community or the brahmin community i think hate is hate and you are not going to contribute uh, to build a better society by spreading it there night you know by speaking this language you may you may influence your audience who are sitting in front of you and they will clap for you and you will feel that you are doing a great thing but one need to understand this is a very 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 a uh, stupid game in which many of us have got into now pleasing the audience in front of you without thinking what is going to be the consequences of what you say what you do now just to please some people sitting in front of you mm-hmm. and that is where the the civil society need to play a role only yesterday i was writing a small article about uh, foreign contribution and civil society what i am trying to argue abhishek bhai is uh, okay this i i i have no no problem in in uh, for in fund you know it's like uh, i i think uh, uh, i believe in jay jagat uh, everybody can get, a, get help everybody and i have seen how very ordinary people selling postcards collect money to support uh, flood victims in kerala or in uh, in uh, bihar so <clears throat> i have no problem with it uh, and this is coming through 
a real real system you know it's like there is a home ministry there is a registration process and so the politician should stop speaking about foreign money as if it is being dropped from the helicopter right they are propagating oh, all these people get foreign money and they are doing this they are doing that this is as if as if somebody is coming in a bringing foreign money in a suitcase and giving it to you <laughs> so see this this idea very very ordinary people who don't know what is this foreign contribution what is this foreign contribution regulation act how voluntary organizations are controlled by home ministry how they have to audit their account and submit it to the home ministry every year <clears throat> without educating people about how this act operates so there is very little chance that somebody can do crooked things um unless they are committed to doing crooked things you know right. so i think in that that kind of a situation rather than making propaganda against voluntary organizations and social organizations like all foreign hands and then suddenly you close up um, uh, amnesty international then you ask uh, green peace to wind up and go then you ask funding agencies to wind up and go see when you have so much control creating this misunderstanding about voluntary organizations and that their role is only because you feel uncomfortable when others become popular you see the popular base of social movements are frightening you so you want to finish them off there is a time when uh, the government used to look up on social movements when vinoba began a uh, land gift movement nehru was so happy that at least a social movement like bhudan movement can take care of the land reform agenda by walking through uh, nook and corner of this country uh, the many examples were voluntary organizations were inspiration of uh, of uh, government and the voluntary organizations began and um, then government followed many programs the first bdo in the world in this country was mv swami who later on became Uh, became a uh, member of parliament but then he was a voluntary organization person uh, and he was picked from the voluntary organization to become the bdo because they said okay if this people can do such wonderful work they why shouldn't they lead the block development offices etc etc so i'm only trying to say look i mean we have um, created a kind of a cloud against voluntary organizations civil society organizations and as a result many people look at civil society organizations with suspicion and that is the reason many young people don't come closer because they are already fed with wrong information of a bunch of people making money and comforts for themselves etc etc so i think uh, the foreign contribution foreign money etc need to be explained and the second argument i am making is look out of large number of voluntary organizations only limited number of them are receiving foreign money all others are doing good work you know the 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 uh, many small clubs in the villages and uh, district level organizations they don't even know there is a thing called foreign money and foreign contribution act they all do good work so coloring everybody every voluntary organization as if uh, these people are out and out to grab money and make their own fortune etc this is a game that the political parties are playing and in spite of putting together an organization like wani voluntary action network of india we were not able to really answer this you know we were not able, really able to uh, to answer this political propaganda in a in a befitting manner so that is one area uh, some work need to go but on the other side i i agree that you know uh, the arrival of foreign funding agencies also had a negative influence on voluntary sector you know when we began uh, we went to villages to say look one handful of wheat every day put into this sarvodaya patra so that we we can run our ashram and for many years i remember in chambal valley we ran our ashram fed so many people with public contribution many youth camps were held because of public contribution bridges were built across river because of public contribution uh, the surrender of mass surrender of decades with public contribution so i think the 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 participation of public uh, uh is missing in many organizations because they were born in this world of foreign contribution you know it's mm-hmm. like uh, mm-hmm. you became a voluntary organization person in an organization where foreign money was coming 
and you thought that is how all the voluntary organizations are designed and you got into this idea of uh, uh, okay foreign contribution is the only way to get the voluntary organizations going so this is a mistake that we did and as a result people started drawing larger salaries uh, the lifestyle started changing and then this started sending a wrong message to to the larger world so i i am not trying to say we didn't make mistakes we also made mistakes and these mistakes are to be corrected but at this point of time when the tri- the government is trying to tighten you tighten your uh, the neck don't worry this is what i'm trying to say look uh, we have a culture india has a culture of uh, social work depending on the society people will mm-hmm. take care of you if you take care of people so i think when you have challenge like when you have covid challenge this is a time to become global leaders and say look i mean uh, uh, we need to come together to fight covid and this is also part of the climate crisis etc etc similarly when there is a huge challenge in front of voluntary sector because the politicians have decided to destroy voluntary sector this is a time for us to stand up and say look we are not here just because of foreign co- support we are here because of our commitment to the society and we know how to go about so i was i was discussing with uh, with uh, my friends in the during the last uh, few weeks about a a four pillar approach you know mm-hmm. we said okay local leadership local politics uh, local economy and local funding i, I mm-hmm. call it grass grass grassroots leadership nice. people need to come from the bottom because it is their problem they need to deal with it local politics we have left panchayat and uh, gram sabha to politicians that cannot be done because that is there is a real sarkar tisri sarkar and this tisri sarkar need to be strengthened so all our trained workers need to take responsibility so that panchayat will not remain corrupt and mm-hmm. an agent of uh, political parties local economy grassroots economy there is the only way for people to survive because in covid you found people are coming back and coming back to what so unless there is a local economy grassroots economy how can they survive mm-hmm. and then finally grassroots funding so if you have grassroots leadership grassroots politics grassroots uh, economic activities and grassroots funding voluntary organization can really say look i mean foreign fund may give us an additional support you know you may do five youth camps rather than doing one when mm-hmm. you have additional money but not having additional money should not cripple you Right. so that is where the voluntary civil society organization need to be careful now so i think this is a very challenging time because of covid because of the attitude of the, the 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 political degradation that i was mentioning because of the attitude of political parties towards voluntary sector and uh, any any uh, voluntarism in this country uh, so i think this is very challenging time but also a time when Uh, probably one can find answers and say look uh, every challenge is an opportunity there is a term many people are using mm-hmm. now so why don't why don't we use this challenging time as an opportunity to design something new so that yes. is how i will i will look at the question that you raised lovely yeah. lovely that is before i mean i would love to go into what new can be created and we were talking about young people and what mm-hmm. can be done but before that i wanted to bring back the conversation you and i had which i'd like more people to listen to which was around moral leadership uh, because i remember very clearly at one stage you had said that uh, you know cultivate moral leadership and moral power and uh, that civil society also must work on cultivating moral leadership uh, as a way of uh, uh, of really uh, you know uh, building something and related to that also is the question of goodness right like you uh, so there's something that moves you to care for people and to actually do good and dedicate your life so what is that where does that goodness for you come from uh does it come from anger does it come from hope does it come from empathy and related to that is also this question of moral leadership and how can we uh, as young people build moral leadership uh, yeah i think um one in my uh uh well when we i my my journey was that i started my work in chambal valley to deal with violence you know and i because i early on because of my 
my closeness to gandhi and gandhian ideas i understood so violence is a huge problem in the world and violence of any form need to come to an end so i began with this uh, uh, work with subarao ji uh, our respected leader subarao ji jay prakash ji also came in so we began with this idea of surrender and rehabilitation of decades in chambal valley but then i didn't stop there and because i understood that this is only one form of violence that we are tackling but there is another form of violence that is poverty exploitation corruption injustice which is rampant in the society and i soon understood that the that form of structural violence is recent for physical violence you know when people get really tired you take a gun and jump into the ravines jump into the jungle uh you feel that before dying i want to kill 10 people who did injustice to me so that that revenge feeling of revenge comes because you were cornered by people in the in the same society mm-hmm. so i said one need to one need to address this uh structural problem structural violence and that is how i started organizing villagers oh, around their land and livelihood issues you know just like uh, uh yesterday i was uh, i was writing an article about land grab you know and this is about uh, uh how many cases are registered in tamil nadu on land grab you know there, there was a and they had to set up a cell for registering land grab cases and thousands of cases started pouring in and who is grabbing whose land mm-hmm. it's always mm-hmm. the powerful people grabbing the land of the poor right mm-hmm. so the powerful people cannot grab the land of the powerful so they grab the land of the poor so and i i i was telling uh, my friend here that look i mean let us send this article to ilc international land coalition and uh, ancoc in in manila because they are the people who are taking up this issue of land grab so these are the forms of uh, structural violence that we find every day in chambal valley there are thousands and thousands of acres of land of adivasis being captured taken by powerful lobbies coming from outside because you have the money you have connection with the officials and uh, you grab land and to do it legally illegally you know so uh, in such a society how do you organize people so mine was basically an extension of uh, dealing with structural violence physical violence to structural violence mm-hmm. but soon traveling across the country i found uh, this is a big problem in this country we 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 are proud of an independent nation but uh, the number of people standing in front of tahsildar's office number of people who are standing in front of collector's office number of people who are touching the feet of forest guard and forest officials mm-hmm. and uh, number of people who are getting evicted in the name of national park wildlife centuries uh, coal mines you know i said this is this is this is something which need to to be answered otherwise what is civilization all about you know some people making money and some people uh, building huge structures for themselves and many people are forced to take their children and family and walk to ahmedabad and bombay in search of some food <coughs> so for me uh, i thought when you when you speak about nation nationalism etc that is a core value you know it's like as long as there is one person facing injustice in my nation uh, how do i speak about nationalism you know nationalism is not uh, some temple constructed there and some mosque built there and you know at this and uh, defeating pakistan in the war this is this is not nationalism nationalism is that my my mind should say that there is as long as there is some injustice in my nation mm. i have difficulty to belong to this nation and that mm. should happen uh, if you if you look back uh, mahatma gandhi said whenever you contemplate an action think of the poorest and weakest in your society see the the his talisman was all about the last person the most deprived person in the society and that attracted me a lot and vivekananda when they step ahead he said look as long as there is a stray dog hungry 
my morality, my my spirituality is to find food for that dog. You know, even leave alone. Gandhi is speaking over the last man, but uh, Vivekananda is taking you further to the dog, right? So, if you don't have this sensitivity, mm. then all this all this social work and spirituality and temple going and all these dramas are just drama. And uh, on top of it, we also say we belong to this great nation and uh, speak about Jagat Guru, etc., etc. I think we live in huge hypocrisy. This is my my problem now. You know, Indians have learned to live in hypocrisy, and uh, we can we can shut our eyes to all the injustice that is happening. All the laborers who are walking back to after COVID lockdown. I mean, when you see so much poverty and injustice and corruption happening in this country, uh, what is happening to the to the energy of the youth of this country? You know, mm. why shouldn't they just stand up and say, "Look, I want to clean it up." Uh, in my training program, I will always say, "Look, I mean, uh, when when you move into a new house, the first thing you do is to clean it up because you want to live in a clean place. You don't want to live in a dirty place." This is young people are. Moving into this country called India, now you want to live in this country. Why don't you clean it up, right? With this this dirt in which we live, and we slowly get uh, accustomed to this. Mm. You know, we 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 say, okay, this debt is okay, this corruption is okay, this much corruption is natural, and this injustice is okay. In every society, there will be so much of injustice. This untouchability is okay. This is part of our history. So slowly, rather than challenging those things. Imagine the number of young people in this country. They come out one day, mm. the country is going to be different. Mm. But they are all running after in West Bengal. <laughs> they are running after uh, uh, the politicians in other other states. So this this is what I call when a country will learn to live with live in hypocrisy, mm. Mm. live in contradiction. The way we are living now, mm. this is what happens. I tell my. Adivasi friends, you know my constituency is uh, Adivasis because mm. I was working with them for so many years. Mm. I tell mm. them, look, you twenty-five thousand of you came, and we walked to Delhi, and you saw that Forest Rights Act came, right? As a, I'm not just because of your work, but many other people acted. But final, final blow came from your your walk, and then hundred thousand people came, one lakh people came. You didn't even walk to Delhi. You only walked to Agra, and land acquisition, rehabilitation, resettlement act came, and an advisory on land reform also came. See, just because twenty-five thousand people are acting, one lakh people are acting, things are changing. Imagine when lakhs of people come out, mm. non-violently, saying that look, we don't want anything. We just want to bring about change in this. In the situation that we don't want this level of corruption, injustice, and poverty in this country, this need to change. Whichever party, I mean, mm. uh, this is a call of young people to the nation, not mm. to not to any any party. Mm. And I think things can change if if Mahatma Gandhi could organize people uh, to a scale to uh, bring about freedom. I, I think uh, the potential are everywhere, and so young people need to take this challenge. You know, we. Uh, you can always say that. Why didn't you do it? Why are you now telling us to do this? So we tried. You know, we uh, went ahead, went around the country, trained young people, sent them back to villages, organized hundreds and thousands of people, walked six and a half months from one end of Raj, one corner of Rajasthan to the one corner of uh, uh, Orissa, then took twenty five thousand people, hundred thousand people. If my age is on the right side. The next one should be ten lakhs people marching to Delhi uh, with a with a bigger demand. So, if that is where we said, look, I mean, because I was uh, I was standing on the shoulder of Vinoba Bhave, I could see it uh, from a from a broader perspective mm. uh, uh, that okay, unless poor people are organized, things are not going to change. Vinoba Ji was trying to change the heart of the well-to-do people and say, look, give the land away because. Treat them as your son and daughter, and give them some land. So he was on the Karuna, Karuna aspect. And when we came, we said, "Okay, Karuna is good. We should promote this Karuna." But probably there should also be some kind of pressure, 
and that is why we said okay along with karuna without fighting using non violence completely let us also create pressure on the state to act so that mm-hmm. is so we went that far but now you have our shoulder to stand up and see things uh, from a much broader perspective and see how a new action can be designed that will take the country um, to greater heights why i say this you know uh, when uh, we got freedom through non violence many other countries also got freedom through non violence because uh, this this had uh, what you call the a, a multiplying effect you know it's like uh, uh, this created an atmosphere where uh, people thought now this is no use holding on to all these countries give them freedom mm-hmm. uh, so similarly uh, if india can demonstrate something uh because of mahatma gandhi's name buddha's name people look to india and not for nuclear power and uh, army power to to learn about peace and non violence as a powerful instrument for change and this mm-hmm. will be india's contribution you know you there are america has uh, much more weapons than you have russia has much more weapons than you have you all the arsenal uh, all the all the mass, mass destruction instrument they have 1000 1560 whereas you have only 300 so uh, that is no match and they are not going to learn from you about how to make this uh, destructive weapons their science is far ahead of us but when it comes to non violence as a science non violence is a method to change the situation there is no match to mahatma gandhi or vinoba bhave or bhagwan buddha mm-hmm. so when we have this huge herit- uh, heritage available why shouldn't we offer this to the world at large so i think uh, mm-hmm. uh, india's contribution indian civil society's contribution should be at, at uh, that level so there can be a lot of problems but i see great possibilities uh, for us to really give some kind of a leadership to the to the planet uh, mm-hmm. and that was the reason why we thought of this jay jagat yatra and went and met the met some officials in uh, in uh, united nation and told them what is jay jagat all about and why jay jagat is important etc so it was slowly building up but then unfortunately covid came and we had to close it down but uh, we should we should really and all of you uh, some of you who are listening you will have to play that role to mm-hmm. build uh, mm-hmm. the agenda of non violence and peace globally mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. okay rajaji that sounds good so i had a question and we can continue i think the uh, in this for a little more if that is fine uh, so as a young person rajaji uh, or now i don't know if i'm anywhere young but uh, when when we look at young people uh, i think what we are seeing are a couple of things right we are seeing a, a addiction to technology we are seeing mental health as a challenge we are also seeing very concerned with oneself kind of almost a self individualized like mai hu Uh, not so much a part of community but a lot of individualization and um, and also willingness not willing to uh, necessarily go physical it's only getting more and more virtual now with covid mm. even more like uh, people don't want to come out and do things and just want to do uh, actions and also we have been doing some of this online actions and so on and getting some reasonable very small number but still like 500 actions to 300 mm. actions mm. and mm. so on so we are starting to get momentum but i think the question is and i feel every generation will have to invent their own answers yeah, yeah, of yeah. what kind of an action will work for their generation what will yeah, mobilize absolutely. and galvanize that so i also understand that we have to do that one question i have is what are we missing is there something that as young people you would if you had a broad agenda to say that young people should build these capacities to be able to organize to be able to do things uh, what skills what perspectives what would you say like a, if you had to name a brief curriculum of sorts saying if a young person <laughs> goes through these what would you you are an original educator i mean you've done camps which have empowered people so for 21st century 2021 what would you name as a uh, curriculum or what some skills some perspectives that come to your mind that we should cultivate for sure yeah uh, well as you said uh, time is changing my time was very different from Uh, what is it today and it operates very differently but one one thing um, that is necessary now is uh, 
to do things that will make people more sensitive to the sufferings of others you know we are all we are all small siddharthas in the palace you know and uh, we refused to go out mm-hmm. from the mm-hmm. palace and siddhartha went out and he saw the mm-hmm. suffering and be, he became buddha so there was a there was a journey uh, how siddhartha became buddha uh, so many of us are in a small palace intellectually we may like to do things but then uh, our heart is not yet bleeding for uh, for others mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh, how to uh, and then this is not going to happen through discussions this is going to happen through exposure that is a problem you know a uh, discussion is basically uh, an intellectual exercise and however hard you may try this will not uh, this will touch the brain this will not touch the heart mm-hmm. uh, touching heart is uh, seeing you know when mm-hmm. when uh, like thousands of people were dying in the mediterranean sea that small boy's death and that photograph shook the world you remember that you know there was this small boy, i don't remember his name but then just one photograph shook the shook the world same in myanmar now there are some one or two photographs that is uh, that is shaking up the consciousness of people in different parts of the world and they say oh if this is so bad then i need to do something i remember when i was taking 1 lakh people from gwalior to delhi uh, uh i i was discussing with people for months and months about 1 lakh people walking to to uh, from gwalior to delhi people said okay walk so what you know that, that's so good uh, cool but then when they saw people without chapel without uh, with all this torn sarees taking children on, on their on their shoulder and uh, eating one meal and sleeping on the road i mean this just shook people to 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 the core and started uh, coming milk and sugar and uh, rice and dal you know we didn't buy anything afterwards you know once they saw it it just shook people and they said mm. no this is not acceptable so one thing is um, what we need with young people is the right kind of exposure so that they they take time to go and uh, see the the level of deprivation and poverty it is not it is not to to uh, to to shock them just for the sake of shocking them. Mm-hmm. it's it's to say look uh, sensitivity will come only through exposure so we need to help that is one important thing uh, because in a globalizing world um, people have become somewhat middle class you know and especially who had this benefit of education uh, they are from the middle class and uh, middle class is in uh, in 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 the gated gated buildings so they don't have this opportunity they of course see the lady coming and cleaning their floor and washing their plate but then that doesn't really give the shock you know yeah so one important thing is for us to work with the young people and give them that sensitivity by giving them exposure the second thing is uh, a long term commitment which we are doing with this 10 people abhishek bhai thank you for doing it a long term commitment you know i have seen uh, many young people coming and going back i mean when they are there they are very excited they feel something need to be done etc but soon you are back into your palace and you know you you behave differently and you you are faced with other realities in life you know so when i am faced with my own reality why do i care for the reality of others in the adivasi area or in the villages so a long term commitment need to need to be brought about through that is an intellectual work that is through discussion through interaction with local people and mm-hmm. understanding how a problem can be tackled mm-hmm. how how do we stop mm-hmm. displacement of adivasis yesterday i wrote a letter to the new commissioner uh forest uh, that is uh, that is the the scheduled tribe uh there is one commissioner now harsh from indore so i wrote him telling that uh, harsh ji uh you and me know uh, primitive tribes were living in the forest all their life and the very reason that we call them primitive eh, adim jati uh, is because they they never had interaction with uh, what you call the ma-
So you were so saying primitive. I was, uh, I was, I was telling you that I, I was asking why should the primitive tribes uh, prove that they were uh, in the forest before two thousand five, and what, what is this? You know, the the forest officials always took uh, money from them. The forest officials took um, honey from them. <laughs> forest officials took uh, uh, alcohol from them. and never gave them a receipt for what you call the illegally occupying forest land now what you are saying is unless you have a paper saying that you were illegally occupying the land before 2005 you you will your land demand will not be settled so i'm telling him that what what insensitivity is this a large number of primitive tribes who lived in forest for so many years and they are now being evicted in the name of wildlife sanctuary in the name of national park in the name of uh, coal mines and you don't see a reason why they should be rehabilitated so why i raised this issue was that's a level of sensitivity that need to come and the forest official doesn't feel anything bad about it collector doesn't feel anything bad about it people making policies don't feel anything bad about it because this huge humanitarian crisis of uh, primitive tribes being pushed into slums is something that we need to really understand so what i am trying to say the educational system has totally failed in sensitizing people uh, educational system of course gave us degrees and diplomas but that didn't make us a uh, real human being kind human being so on one side is uh, this long long term commitment with an understanding that things are not going to change just because i participate in a youth camp mm -hmm. i participate in nss camps and go to a village and lifelong i keep speaking about the village that i visited when i was in college you know this is not going to help this is a lifelong campaign to change the situation so that mm -hmm. is the other thing so first is exposure the second thing is a long term commitment and the third one is our our coming together to make a mass movement for change mm -hmm. it has to be non violent so uh, young people need to learn deeply about a non violent process and why non violence is important etc but to understand look as long as there is no deeper change in this country at the level of caste at the level of poverty at the level of discrimination it is not fun to live in a country like this you know it's it's not just i making benefit out of it and i i making some fun out of it but then i need to live in a society that is just and that deeper feeling and for that the kind of work so on one side it is it is the sensitivity part uh, on one side it is the clarity part of what i want to do with my life mm. and the third one is the capacity to work for it by risking one's own time and energy etc mm. etc so mm. so if you need to draw an agenda of at what level you need to work then i will say you need to work at the at the at the sensitivity level you need to work at the commitment level and each one of this is a block you know it's mm. like you need to take the person through a complete process mm. process you can't say just yeah. a visit will create sensitivity there is an ongoing thing uh, just a visit is not going to create commitment there is an ongoing thing and a long term plan is also something an ongoing thing but it is almost like saying look let me be the card for the pig you know it's like you know let me be the manual mm. for the tree to grow Mm -hmm. and i may not be seen i may not be worshiped i may not be uh, given uh, all the awards of the world but why shouldn't i i be the khad for the ped kind mm -hmm. of an approach mm -hmm. and that is what young people need to go through and all our uh, institutions wherever they are need to work towards it oh. giving that uh, three three dimensional possibility for our young people to get mm, involved lovely lovely great that's a great uh, i would say that's a great direction a great agenda raja ji and yeah, yeah. Uh, i think just to close i would ask uh, i think any uh, closing appeals invitations calls for action that you have towards uh, young people uh, at this moment and second question would be over your organizing journey over the last so many decades any lessons that you would like to share that we could build further on see the the idea on which i am now working 
I mean, uh, uh, when you uh, when you get old, you get restless, you know. So you, you need to, you feel like doing something that is that is big. So at the moment, um, having having closed the Jai Jagat process for a while, uh, what I'm saying is, India has, uh, and we need a pan India movement. Any, any uh, somebody will be successful in a block. Somebody will be successful in a district. Somebody even at a state level, but that is not going to make a national impact. India being what it is, uh, large, we need a pan India presence. So when I say we, many of us who think the same way, believe in non-violence, um, and believe in in restriction in terms of how you speak, how you behave, etc. So. Uh, if we say there are 746 or 47 districts in this country, uh, the first thing is to have uh, at least one or two people in every district. If you want to call a district in Manipur, do you have a friend there? Or in Arunachal Pradesh, do you have a friend there to call and say, look, this is now for example, uh, when the, the, the uh, people are coming from Myanmar to Mizoram, I wanted to call somebody in Mizoram, but I don't have somebody in Mizoram immediately to call. But I have uh, Rishi in uh, in uh, Manipur, so I could call Rishi and say, "Look, come on, what are you doing? People are coming. Why don't you put a tent up?" <laughs> so this is what you need, you know, pan India presence, so that you are able to really work when there is crisis, when there is a problem. Second is can, can each one of them uh, help us to identify? Uh, can each one of them help us to identify uh, a group of 10 people, like you are doing 10 in Bombay, <laughs> 10 people, and uh, this 10 committed people. So I think about 10,000 people across India, thinking people, committed people, they will bring about a change. And uh, that one person can't do it. So you need many people in many parts of the country doing the same thing with an understanding that we need to bring it into one basket at some point of time for basic change in this country. So recently I gave a call of action whereby we said, okay, let us work towards it. And uh, so uh, that is in my mind at the moment. What, how do you create a pan India presence? How do you identify this committed young people? How do you expand the network? And how do we finally act in a way that that can bring about change, you know, and real change uh, for the marginalized communities, suffering communities, etc. Um, there are people who are, I, I support people who work on uh, electoral reforms, judicial reforms and police reforms and whatnot, you know. Things cannot move only from the bottom. It is very important that things should move from the bottom by organizing people, etc. But this mess that is being created by educated people uh, uh, in the judiciary, in the police department, in the political circle, in the administrative circle, in spite of benefiting from this country so much, in spite of getting so much education at the cost of poor people of this country, you can only create a world of this kind, a country of this kind, is, is a matter of shame to my mind. So I think uh, on one side, you need to work uh, I am offering these two possibilities because each one of us will not be comfortable uh, uh, at both levels. Some of you are comfortable to work from the top. Do that with a plan. And some of us will be comfortable to work with the bottom. Let us do that. But let us see where do we meet in terms of creating a just world order. Right? That is a very, very important thing in my mind. Great, lovely Rajaji. I think that Thank sounds you. really lovely. Thank you so much for your time and thank, thank you, you so much Bhai. for sharing. And I hope this message reaches a lot of people and that yeah. we're able to create what you're dreaming of. So with that wish, oh, Jai well. Jai, thank you. Thank you. I may not be able to, uh, I may, might not have done justice to all the questions that you asked, but, but there uh, is a lot yeah, there for us to think about. There's a lot so that we can, yes, we yes. can think in this direction. That would be really good. So thank you for all the work you are doing, Abhishek, by I mean, wonderful work. And thank even you. that small 10 group, 10 people traveling together, uh, I'm sure they will make a change. They will bring about a change, but it can be expanded nationally definitely, and definitely. globally. Yeah? Definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah? Thanks. Greetings to everybody.
Thank you. Yes, Thank you.